and Ramel is going to be song leading for us today. So song 160 as we stand together. <clears throat> Okay, so <clears throat> page 160, crown him with many crowns. today. Father, we are so thankful that we have the privilege of being here, and we thank you for your goodness and your grace toward us this past year. Father, thank you for the love you've bestowed upon us, and Lord, the Davidite mercies, and Father, we are thankful that your mercies are new every morning, and great is thy faithfulness. Lord, as we look ahead to a new year, Lord, we know many are sick, and we do pray for them today, and Lord, I pray that you would restore these families and these different members of the families back to good health so they'd be able to be here in your house once again. But Father, for those who are here this morning, we thank you for the privilege of being here. And this is the day that you have made. And I pray that we would rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we ask that you would speak through your word today to us, encourage and uplift. Lord, I do again thank you uh, for the love you bestowed upon us. And we are unworthy. But we thank you that we can love you because you have first loved us. Lord, would you be magnified and exalted in and through our service today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's remain standing. Go over, go over to song 183 now. Song 183 for the next song. <clears throat> okay. Oh, how I love Jesus. Let's sing all the four stanzas.
Amen. Please be seated. You know, we've got some of the uh, teens who grew up through the youth group and have gone off, and uh, we've got some who are back from uh, college down in the States. Do you guys remember that, uh, say, Tony, do you love Jesus? Do you remember that? I don't know if I've done it. I, I can't do it with the present youth group, but I don't think we've done it with them. Uh, does anybody know that part where you add that song? No one, no, no one's going to raise their hand because the preacher's going to call on me. Uh, if it was, I'm going to pr- pick on our missionary here this morning. Uh, we've got the Jones here. So I would say, uh, say, Brother Jones, do you love Jesus? He would respond with, oh, yes, I love Jesus. The rest of us say, are you sure you love Jesus? And then he would sing, I'm sure I love Jesus. And we say, tell us why you love Jesus. And he would say, here's why I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. That's the reason we all ought to love him. And oh, and you sing the chorus. Does that sound familiar now? No, no. <clears throat> Still no volunteers for me to pick on, amen. Uh, we used to sing that when I was uh, just a teenager growing up in youth group, and uh, I'll have to teach that to the present teens so I can then pick on them. Isn't that exciting? Amen. No. <laughs> amen. Uh, good to have each and every one of you here. Uh, again, we are, this is New Year's Eve day, and I'm thankful that you folks are here today. Uh, we had a great time for youth on Friday. We went over to the Red River Exhibition Lights with the teens and had a great time, did a bit of a sleigh ride while we are there in the lights, and uh, we uh, uh, had a beautiful evening to be outside. The Lord's given us some wonderful weather, amen. So uh, thank you to the teens who came to that. Um, as far as tonight, there were plans. We were going to have an abbreviated service tonight and then move into a fellowship time. I know there are many, many who are sick, so we are going to forego the fellowship time. We're not going to do that tonight, um, but we will have still the, uh, the service tonight. Uh, it'll be a shorter service, and then you can all go home and be sick together. Amen. So uh, we'll do that this evening. But again, no fellowship after the evening service. Uh, so uh, please be aware of that. And if anybody asks you, hey, you're going to the fellowship, let them know there's no fellowship after tonight's service. All right. Maybe we'll do that down the road once uh, folks get this uh, bug out of their system. All right. We'll do another fellowship, but not tonight. Uh, then we have our Wednesday evening prayer and Bible study, 7 o'clock. Let me encourage you to be here for that. Right now we're looking at our study, Making the Home Work. And there's a lot of good principles. And we're looking right now into the aspect of uh, how do you deal with a prodigal? Uh, if there's a prodigal in the family and we're broadening it to uh, how as a church do we deal with this when there's hurts and disappointments? And there's a lot of good Bible principle that will help you deal with some of these things. So I hope you'll be here on Wednesday night. Um, Then we have next Sunday. Don't miss out on that. Um, Again, there is some more um, openings on the snow clearing and the church cleaning schedule. So please drop by and sign up for that, guys. That would be a blessing. Uh, I think that's all we have for you right now. We'll give more announcements as those things become relevant. But uh, that's it for now. Uh, Do we have any either references to the Redeemer this morning or glimpses of grace? Anybody with a glimpse of grace or a reference to the Redeemer? Oh, don't scratch your nose. I'll, I'll pick you. Not your nose. But uh, I'll choose you. Anybody this morning? How many are wiped out after the week? Yeah, some of you are, amen. I know some were sick, and uh, again, it's good to... Uh, I, I honestly didn't think there'd be hardly anybody here today. So I'm glad to see as many uh, here as are here. Uh, pray for some. We've got some of you traveling this week, and pray for safety, um, and uh, be thinking of one another, praying for one another. All right, if I don't, I don't see any hands, so let's move on then to our next song. In fact, you know what? Maybe we have time for one favorite song. Does anybody have a favorite hymn? Anybody have a favorite hymn? I know I kind of, we don't normally do that on Sunday morning, but uh, Brother Rick? 174. Um, is that my Jesus I love thee? Yeah, that's uh, one of Brother Rick's favorite songs. My Jesus I love thee. Uh, since we're only doing the one favorite, let's just do all those verses, brother. 
All right, and then we'll move to uh, your next song here as well. Okay, song 174. Offering him, please turn to page 293. Page 293. So uh, uh, let's all stand, sing out. And so, uh, ushers, this will be our offering him.
Our gracious Father, we do thank you, Lord, that you gave your Son, Lord, to be born as we celebrate the birth of Christ. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for the sacrifice that you gave for us. And, Father, that we can remember the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we ask and pray, Lord, that you'd bless this time, Lord. Bless the service this morning. Be with pastor as he brings the message that you've given him, Lord. And allow the Holy Spirit, Father, to minister to each and every one of our hearts, Lord. Be, meet with us this morning, Lord. Meet with us, Father, and we thank you, Lord, that you are here. I ask your blessing upon this offering. Bless the gift and the giver in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. know that song? Wow, four of us. Uh, I thought that was a lot more familiar. Uh, so if you, if I said let's sing the chorus, you wouldn't be able to sing the chorus. No? Nathan, come on up. Come on, come on. You, you, I, I saw your hand, brother. A, a raised hand as a volunteer. Uh, uh, just the chorus. A passion for thee. You know the chorus? I think so. Okay. Let's jump into the chorus. We need the flute as well for those high notes. <laughs> Uh, a passion hands. Uh, I hope you come back tonight. Um, we have a couple young ladies from the Jones family that uh, have been begging to sing a song, right gals? Yeah, 
Uh, I was up there this past, was that February or March? I was up there in Rankin. March, I was up there, and uh, they did some special music, and they have uh, an auto harp they play, and uh, the guitars and such. I think there was another instrument they were playing, and um, we won't have the instruments, I don't think, but we've got the voices. The, those, those smiles, that's, uh, that's excited smiles. We're going to sing, I'd rather have Jesus tonight. Uh, we'll just maybe do it down here on the floor, less pressure less pressure. But uh, we'll do that down here. And maybe we'll drag mom and dad into that. We'll see. But uh, uh, we're going to sing that song tonight. I'm glad to have the Jones here uh, this morning with us. And uh, they are heading back up home very soon. Pray for them. They've been gone for a while and uh, on furlough and such and heading back up home. So they're going up there. I mean, they're going where it's cold, folks. Uh, it's not like uh, southern Manitoba here where it's sunny and warm and, uh, you know, an inch of snow. They're heading back up to Rankin Inlet, so pray for their safety this week as they travel back there to home, all right? Um, we've got one more song. Oh, we've got scripture reading. Let's not forget that. Let's go over in our Bibles to uh, the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 1. We're going to read one of Brother Jesse's favorite passages today. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. We're going to read the first four verses. <clears throat> Second Corinthians chapter 1. And let's stand together as we have the word of God read. Second Corinthians chapter 1 verses 1 through 4. We read in God's word once again. It reads, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God and Timothy our brother, unto the church of God which is at Corinth, with all the saints which are, are all or are, with all the saints which are in all Achaia. Grace be to you, and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. And may these verses be a blessing and encouragement and help to us today and into this new year. Let's go over to Song 1804, the last hymn, Song 180. Okay, let's sing all the three verses. <clears throat>
Amen. Please be seated for our special today. We have something a little different and special, and that is we're going to have Gideon and Hannah play on their violins. So I hope you'll listen as they play, and it'll be a blessing to you. Go ahead. Amen. Appreciate that. The song is, May the Lord Find Us Faithful. Uh, now, come on, that's a familiar one. That's a good reminder. Uh, uh, you all know that one. You know the chorus, at least, on that one, right? Yeah, let's sing the chorus together, all right? May the Lord find us faithful. You folks keep me on tune, all right? Here we go. May the Lord find us faithful. May his word be our banner held high. May the Lord find us faithful every day though we live, though we die. Amen. I pray the Lord will find us faithful. Let's take our Bibles and go to 2 Corinthians. Maybe we'll do some extra singing tonight in the, uh, the service. Sing some of these favorite songs. That song is, the first part is taken from 2 Timothy 1.7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. As we get into a new year, I don't know about you, but you hear all kinds of things over the, the uh, airwaves, the news, and social media, and so much doom and gloom, and uh, God hath not given us the spirit of fear. Amen. And we ought to trust the Lord and carry on in trusting the Lord. Uh, and these verses will help us in that as we look at 2 Corinthians chapter 1 this morning. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. If you listen during testimony time and during uh, different other times when we have folks uh, uh, speak of verses that encourage them 
or uh, testimonies to the grace of God. In fact, just recently, uh, we heard Brother Jesse mention these verses, and I know he loves verse number three and four. And we're going to be looking at those verses today as we get ready to go into a new year. Um, again, right now, I, I've got a whole list of people that texted me in the last three days saying, uh, Preacher, we won't be there this Sunday. We're sick, and uh, please pray for us. And um, uh, the, the list was long. In fact, Brother Anthony was going to be out of town t this morning, and he, I said, well, call so-and-so, and he called so-and-so, and then he called so-and-so. He said, I've been through half the church, and everyone's sick. So uh, I appreciate Ramel's song leading for us today, and uh, uh, I guess he was called, and he stepped in, so thank you, brother, for that. But the list is long of church people who uh, are not here today, and, uh, um, you know, usually I don't look at the camera and uh, focus on the live stream a lot. I focus on the people who are here but we've got a bunch of folks who are at home uh, live streaming today, and uh, I hope that uh, you folks will maybe send them a text, uh, give them a call, and let them know they're missed, all right? But uh, we have a lot of folks who are sick. Uh, we have some also who are dealing in, as I mentioned, during the Christmas time, during this season of time that families get together, uh, we've got a few families who are dealing with the loss of a family member this year. And that is a difficult thing to go through. Uh, we have a number of church uh, people who, are, who have had some tests, different health tests, and are awaiting results. And if you've been through that, that time of waiting is a difficult time, is it not? Uh, these times of waiting are difficult times. And so there's a number of things going on, and I thought of this verse here. I wanted to uh, read this verse, verse 3, and then verse 4. Um, verse 3 is a tremendous truth that we ought to hang on to. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort. And we often think of that, and, we, and I'm going to preach on that, that God is a God of all comfort. But remember as well that uh, God is the Father of mercies. His mercies are new every morning, amen? Great is His faithfulness. I am thankful that he is a merciful God. What is the difference of grace and mercy? Grace is God giving us what we do not deserve. Mercy is God not giving us what we do deserve. And God is a merciful God. He's the father of mercies. And he is here called the God of all comfort. And then verse 4 goes on to uh, uh, give us some understanding. It says, Who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Uh, how many like these verses? These are, these are verses that you hang on to. I know there's a few of you who like these verses. Uh, verse 4 maybe is one that we practically don't like. We like verse number three, God is the father of mercies. He's the God of all comfort. That's encouraging, amen. But verse four goes and tells us that, it, that we have a ministry. What is our ministry? Well, as God comforts us in all our tribulation, what should we then do? That we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. And this is not really the message today. I'm looking at more that God is a God of comfort. Uh, but the fact is, as God comforts you through your tribulation and testings and trials, what should you then do down the road? Comfort other people. There might be somebody that you can come alongside and you can speak a word of encouragement to that maybe someone else can't because they haven't gone through that situation, and yet you could write a card to them, a, a comfort card. You could send them a text, all right, or reach out to them through social media, or even go a bit older school and pick up the phone and dial their number. I know that sounds weird today, but give them a call 
Amen. Uh, and that's a wonderful thing to do. So God will allow us to go through some things that we can then in turn down the road be a comfort, a source of comfort to those other people. But understand the source of comfort is not you. Who is the source of comfort? The uh, verse 4, the, the latter part carries or it uh, uh, covers that for us. It says, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. So people often ask me, preacher, how do you, you know, how do you know what to say during different times then? And many times we don't, but the comfort that God gives you, you can then pass on that comfort and that source of comfort to that other person and point them not to you, but to whom? To God. Because God is the source of comfort. Again, he is the God of all comfort. So we're going to get into uh, uh, some thoughts here from these uh, verses. And uh, that was all just free. Thanks for being here this morning. Amen. Uh, so d don't, just, don't just internalize the comfort God gives you. You need to then be a blessing and a help to other people. But valleys and trials really are part of our lives. And even those of us who are saved, uh, when we get saved, does that mean there's never going to be a valley or never be a trial? Well, certainly not. Uh, we wouldn't need faith if that was the case. There's going to be valleys. There's going to be trials. And it is in those times that God will grow us. Uh, God does not bring these things into our lives to defeat us or to discourage us, but for us to turn to him and trust in him. And as we go through these times, God wants us to know that he is with us. We're going to look at that today. He is with us and he wants to comfort us. Uh, what a blessing these verses are. First of all, verse three here, God is caring and God is a God of comfort. Now this agrees to 1 Peter 5. Look over there in your Bibles if you would with me today. Keep your finger there in 2 Corinthians. We're coming back here. But 1 Peter 5. Verse 5 speaks of submitting yourselves. Verse 6 speaks of humbling yourselves. And then verse 7, we read, Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Now, verses 5 and 6 is speaking directly. You'll, if you read those verses, you'll see there, God resisteth the proud. Uh, we are to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. And it goes on to say, casting all your care upon him. So who is the him? Um, is it your, your husband, ladies? Is that who you're to cast all your care upon? No, now, certainly spouses can help bear one another's burdens. But casting all your care upon whom? Is it upon your parents? Is it upon the preacher? Even now, again, we can be part of that network to help uh, bear one another's burdens. But where should we go to? Whom should we go to? God. And many times we go to everybody else we know. We don't go to God. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. And I, I want to remind you today that God cares for you. Um, you say, well, if God loved me, God wouldn't allow anything bad to come into my life. Um, is, is, is that, is that uh, doctrinal teaching? No, that's feeling speaking. Uh, know that when difficult times do come, who cares for you? God cares for you. Amen. Uh, I am thankful and it's comforting to me to know that God cares for his own. So when those burdens come, when those difficulties come, what are we to do? We are to cast those things upon him. And very practically, day by day, that might just mean you taking some time and spending with the Lord saying, God, uh, this burden is too heavy for me to carry. This health battle, uh, this waiting on hearing news, it's too difficult and I'm going to give it to you. 
I'm going to lay it at your feet. Would you strengthen me? And we'll talk about that in just a minute here. And it's comforting to know that God is a God of all comfort and he cares for us. Um, I, I have said many times, I remember back to when my, my wife and I, before we were married, uh, and maybe we should do this after we're married, but uh, do you ever write notes to that significant person in your life before you were married? You wrote notes, amen, you corresponded. Why is it once we get married, we stop writing notes? I don't know. Uh, men, new year, new thing to do. Maybe you could write little notes to your wife saying I love you. Uh, years ago, my wife put a, some chalkboard paint on one of the inside of the cupboards, and she had something written on there, and I erased it one day, and I wrote, I love you. Uh, and, uh, folks, literally, this was years ago. Do you know what's still on the inside of that cupboard on that chalkboard paint? Those three words, I love you, are still there. Uh, men, maybe we could start writing notes. Amen. Uh, but when you write a note and you read that, isn't it wonderful? Oh, he cares for me. Amen. A flower can do the same thing. It helps your wife know you care for her. Or men, maybe your wife does something, you know, puts, puts that wonderful apple in your lunch. Amen. Why should she do that? She wants you around longer. She cares for you. Amen. It's wonderful to know that someone cares for us. When we go through valleys, isn't it wonderful to know that God cares for us? He cares for me. The one who created the universe, he cares for me. He cares for you. And I'm thankful for that. Uh, why does God care for us? Well, he created us, yes, but it's closer than that. If you're saved, why does God care for you? What are you part of? You're part of his family, amen? And he cares for you as a family member. Uh, now that hinges upon whether you are saved or not. God cares for his own. We often sing that song, uh, does Jesus care? Uh, you know that song, amen? I'm not gonna bring you up to sing it here this morning like I've already done with Nathan, but we know that song. Does Jesus care? Is that not how we feel sometimes? Is that not what our heart cries out? Does Jesus care? Why would he allow this? Why would he bring this into my life or allow this in my life? Does he really care? Uh, what does the chorus say? Oh, yes, he cares, I know. He cares, his heart is touched with my grief. Amen. Uh, he cares. He cares, I know he cares. And so as we look at 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3, and we read those words, he is the God of all comfort. Know today that Jesus cares. Whatever your family might be going through, whatever you might be going through, does Jesus care? Yes, he does. And not only uh, does he care, blessed be the God, even the uh, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation. And what does that tell us? That God is close. In all of our tribulation, whatever that might be, God is close to you. God cares about you, and God is close to you. What promise do we have in Hebrews that reminds us that God is close? Uh, many of you remember Brother Hebert. And Brother Hebert's now with the Lord, absent from the body, is present with the Lord. But Brother Hebert mentioned this verse many, many, many times when we had, uh, what verse do you love? Hebrews 13, 5, what promise do we have? I will, and the Lord said this, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Amen. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And so what do we know from Scripture? Not only does God care, but God is close. He is close to us. And that brings great comfort, knowing that God is close. I remember many, many years ago, I was about seven or eight years old, I believe. Um, I got the croup. Have you had, anybody ever had the croup? Remember the croup? Oh, man, I got that when I was young. And I'd wake up and I'd cough, and the phlegm would block my windpipe, and I couldn't breathe. I'd be uh, gasping for breath. And you can imagine as a child, that's a scary thing. And I'd wake up gasping for breath. And do you know who was sitting right beside my bed? 
My mother was. She sat there, and I remember as a young boy, she would pick me up and carry me outside. Normally, the croup goes around in the winter time, around this time of year, and she'd carry me outside, and that blast of cold air in the middle of the night would free that up, and I could breathe all of a sudden. Uh, but you know what was a great comfort? To look over there and know, not only did my mother care, but my mother was close. She sat right there beside me for that night through. Amen. And I'm thankful that as Christians, as a family of God, we can know that God is close. God is close. Many of you know we have two dogs at home, uh, Penny, our four-year-old dog, and Nickel. Uh, Penny and Nickel are the two dogs we have, and Nikki's still a puppy, and uh, I take them out to the woods sometimes to let them run. Penny, uh, well, Nickel, she would get lost. Um, if it wasn't for Penny, we wouldn't have Nickel anymore, because Nickel will run off wherever into the woods. But you know where Penny likes to be? Penny likes to be close to me. And so Nickel likes to be close to Penny, and so by default, we still have Nickel. Amen. Because Penny likes to stay close. She, wherever I go, uh, Penny wants to be able to see me. And then Nickel will stay close to Penny. And so we still have two dogs because one likes to keep me close. I am thankful that God stays close to us. And there is great comfort in knowing that no matter what you're going through, and some are going through very difficult times right now in your families. Uh, can I remind you of Acts 17, 27? And you can write down the reference. I'll read the verse for you, or you could look over there if you'd like. Acts 17, verse 27 speaks of the fact that they should seek the Lord if happily they might feel after him and find him. And, and before I read the end of the verse... Uh, I, I want you to think about that. They should seek the Lord if happily they might feel after him and find him. Have you ever been searching for something in the dark? Maybe it's a person, maybe it's an item, and you're, you're looking and you're, you're, you're seeking for it. You're trying to find it. And the idea here in this verse is that uh, someone is searching for God, and maybe in your life you're going through difficulties and you're searching for God. You're looking for direction. You're looking for comfort from God. It says, it says, if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. What a blessing that is. Though he be not far from every one of us. So in those moments when you feel like God has left, be reminded that God cares for you and also God is close. He's not far. Amen. And all you need to do is draw nigh to him and he will draw nigh to you. God promises us that he is always close by to comfort us in all those scary times of life. All those difficulties, God cares and God is close. He is, he is always present. Now we don't always feel that. We were just talking uh, I think it was last week to someone about this. Uh, you can't trust your feelings, amen? Uh, people who trust their feelings get into all kinds of issues. Uh, your feelings will lead you astray. We walk by faith and not by sight. Feelings would be tied to what? Faith or sight? Sight, amen? It's what I see, what I observe, what I perceive, all right? This is how I feel. And there's all kinds of times when we feel like God maybe has forsaken us. But what does the truth of God's word say? I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And this is those times when it's time to uh, take into captivity every thought. Amen. We, we can't allow our mind to run away with itself. And while I feel like this, we have to walk by faith and not by sight. Uh, during those difficult times, we feel like maybe God has forgotten about us or God has forsaken us, but that is not true. He is present always and uh, uh, all the time. Isaiah 41, verse 10. I read these verses, oh, but a month ago to the church family. Isaiah 41, verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. 
Uh, and this is uh, true today. Man, we have the Holy Spirit of God indwelling us if we are saved. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed. Why? For I am thy God. This verse is a great verse. Uh, you can preach a series of messages on this one verse. Uh, I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Now, I need to be careful not to get off into a whole separate message on this one verse, but just break that down. Uh, we are told, fear thou not. We've already mentioned 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, and uh, that uh, song was played. God hath not given us the spirit of fear. Fear thou not. Why? God says, fear thou not. But, but the world, but society, but the banks, but, but health, and, and on it goes, fear thou not, for I am with thee. I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. And again, I will strengthen thee. So do you lack strength today? God says, I will strengthen thee. Um, it goes on to say, I will help thee. Do you ever need help? Whether it's your health, whether it's your family situation, whether it's the future, whatever it might be, I will help thee. It goes on to say, I will uphold thee. Have you ever been weak? Years ago, most of you won't remember this, years ago, uh, we had the Faithway Baptist College have a singing group come through, and they were standing right over here on this stage. I was sitting right down here, and I was watching as one of the gals who was a, a tall lady, and she was in the back row, and she began, it was, it was in the summertime, it was very hot in this building. We have AC now, but we didn't have AC for years, and this building would get very hot. And she was up here singing, and we began to watch her sway a little bit. And then it kind of got more and more. As she was, and all of a sudden, she just closed her eyes, and she was out. She just passed out. And one of the people beside her caught her as she fainted, and they helped her down. So they helped her, but what did they do? They also held her up. Do you ever have time when you get so weak you just fall down? And you need to be held up? God says, I will uphold thee. He says, I will help thee, I will strengthen thee, I will uphold thee. And all of these parts of this verse bless my heart, and I'm encouraged by them. Uh, and there's some church folks right now who they need to be strengthened by the Lord. They need to be helped by the Lord. And they need to be held up by the Lord, and I'm thankful that God will do that for us. And is God strong enough? Uh, well, let's look over at Psalm 91, verse 2. I've often encouraged folks who are going through difficult times to read through Psalms. Certain, certain parts of the Bible will help you during certain times of life. And in times of suffering and turmoil, the book of Psalms is a great source of encouragement uh, because you read of, of, of David and his life and you read of all that he went through and they certainly are a blessing, these Psalms and the other writers who went through these difficult times. Look at verse number 2 of Psalm 91. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress my god in him will i trust so what does it saying uh what what does it say of the lord he is my refuge he is my fortress he is my god he is all of these things amen uh, when we are in difficult times we often look at the troubles and trials but we see here that we have the Lord who is our refuge and our fortress. Uh, the idea is of a, uh, a fortress, uh, something where you can go to hide from the attacks. You can get behind the walls and the gates 
and hide there. And the psalmist placed his trust in God and received that fortifying help and comfort. God was his place of protection. Uh, look over at chapter 36 if you're still there in Psalms. Psalms 36 and verse 7. Psalm 36, verse 7. How excellent is thy loving kindness, O God. Therefore the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. Um, we see there the reference to the loving kindness of God. Uh, despite the troubles and trials, despite all those things, the dangers, the difficulties, God is loving and God is kind. And we, he, we see this word, uh, his loving kindness. And because of that, it says, Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. And again, we have that idea of uh, uh, the chicks that would go under the wings of the hen. And why do the chicks do that? Yeah, they, they, they do so for security, for protection. Uh, years ago, I mentioned the, uh, well, one of the first dogs we had, Molly. I take her to the dog park. She was scared to death of the big dogs. She was just a little dog and scared to death of the big dogs. And uh, many of you have heard the story. Some of you haven't. And uh, when the big dog would come, Molly would come not only close to me, she would literally stand between my feet. And at off times, I would kind of bend down, I'd squat down, and she'd get underneath my legs and poke her head up. And, and I could look down and see her whole body was just quivering. She was so scared of these other dogs. But she took comfort knowing that I was there and I would do what? I would protect her, all right, and hide her. And I'm thankful that God now... Uh, if a big Doberman came, I don't know, maybe I would have run. I don't know, let, let, let the dog fend for itself. I don't know. But God never leaves us. God never forsakes us. He is always there. Amen. And he is strong enough to protect you. He is my refuge. He is my fortress. Um, for those with uh, children, when uh, a big thunderstorm comes through, Big thunder and lightning storm at night. Where do the children want to be? Amen. They want to be there with mom. They want to be in the bedroom, maybe hiding under the comforts, uh, under the comforter. Why? Because they're scared. And they know there's safety, there's help. Where? With their parents. And God is our refuge. And God is our strength. He is, he is loving, kind, unto, he is loving and kind unto us and we ought to find our comfort and security knowing that god is close and we ought to draw nigh to him during those times and be comforted by his strength back to second corinthians chapter one we ought to trust in him we read there in psalm 91 when whatever it is comes into your life and your heart is burdened or your heart is breaking, where can you go? You can go unto the Lord. He is the God of all comfort. And he comforts us not just some of the time. What does verse 4 assure us of? Who comforteth us in some of our tribulation? In most of our tribulation? No, what does your Bible read? In all our tribulation. And that ought to, again, encourage us. We can call upon the Lord and be assured of his divine help and comfort and encouragement and strength. And again, let me remind you, verse 4, uh, not only does God comfort us, but God, God instructs us here that we ought to take time and effort and energy to comfort them which are in any trouble. With that comfort, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. So I hope some of these verses, again, Isaiah 41.10 is a great verse to go to if you're struggling. Uh, know that God will help you. God will strengthen you. Uh, God will uphold you at the right hand of his righteousness. God wants to be there to comfort you. 
Um, but what do you need to do? That comfort is there. The comforter is there. But you need to draw nigh unto the comforter. Amen. Uh, that's our job, to draw nigh unto him. His job is to comfort and to sustain and to give help and to give encouragement. And uh, my prayer is that if you're going through a difficulty, don't just try to figure it out yourself. Don't go into this new year just trying to find your own way through these troubles and trials. Go to the Lord, amen? And that might mean being in church, hearing preaching. It might mean picking up your Bible and saying, God, I need some help. God, I need, I need some encouragement. Would you lead me to a verse today that would encourage me? Uh, show me your strength. Give me some guidance for the road ahead. Uh, turn your eyes upon the Lord, amen? And as that song says, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Let's have a word of prayer today. Father, I want to pray especially for people today who are going through difficulties. Lord, there's likely some who are sitting here who maybe this message doesn't, doesn't really strike a nerve in their heart today because there's maybe not that many difficulties or things that are very upsetting right now in their life. But Father, as we go into this new year, I'm sure that things will come into each of our lives where we will need these verses and these truths. Lord, it might be that there are, and there are certainly some here today in this crowd, some who are live streaming, who are going through great difficulties. Some of it is health. Lord, some have family members that they've had to say goodbye to. But Father, we thank you for those who are saved we sorrow not as those who have no hope because we know that we will see these loved ones once again and yet it is still difficult in this interim time. So Father, I pray that these people would very practically experience the fact that you are the God of all comfort and you comfort us in all of our tribulations. All of those difficult times, Father, you desire to be there and to help give strength and guidance and hope. So Father, I pray that you would help each one to draw an eye to you and to cast their cares upon you as we read there in 1 Peter 5, 7. Cast their cares upon you knowing that you care for them. Father, thank you for these promises that we hold near and dear during difficult times. And as we get ready to roll over into a new year, Father, we do pray for your continued grace. We pray for your mercies. Lord, I pray that you would continue to encourage and to comfort. With heads bowed and eyes closed, again, there may be some today where this verse doesn't, and these verses don't really resonate with you because maybe you're not going through some difficulty right now. But I'm sure in the past you have, and if God tarries his return and God gives us another year here on earth, there will be trials. There will be troubles. And we will need these verses. And maybe these verses do resonate with some of you because you are going through a difficult time. And whether... The church people know it about it or not. You know about it. God knows about it. And God wants to comfort you. But you've got to make the decision to draw nigh to him and depend upon him. Put your trust in him. And yes, maybe you put your trust in him for salvation. Praise the Lord for that. But are you putting your trust in him day by day for the strength you need and the guidance and the wisdom So wherever you are, know that God is close and God is the God of all comfort. He wants to help you through that difficulty. But you've got to rely on him. I'm going to ask the piano to play a song of invitation. And as that song is played, maybe today right where you are, you can take some time to cast your cares upon him.
dismiss us in order of prayer, please? Amen. Don't uh, forget, we are having service tonight, but no fellowship to follow, all right? Uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you, and we'll see you tonight.